All right, let's assume that you have finished your app, you've done everything you've wanted to do, you've got your splash screen, you've got your view menu, got everything working the way you want it, and now you're ready to deploy to the Google Market or the Amazon App Store. And in order to do that, we need to build the app and export a release build. So everything we've done up to here, when we do uh, running the basic app or when we do a debug, basically it's just creating a temporary file and we need to create a final release. And in order to do that, we also need to sign the app. So to create a release build, first thing we need to do is set some things within the properties of this project. So right click on the root of the project and choose properties. And here, uh, if you haven't seen this already, but basically it's within the flex build packaging and we want the Google Android. So at this point, we it, it's asking for a digital signature. Now, for Android apps, we don't need to do anything special. We can just do a self-signed signature. To do that, let's go ahead and click Create. And you'll need to give this a name. I'll just put in my name. Put in your own information accordingly. Spell it however you want. Uh, we want to leave the password signing type, the encryption type, and then give yourself a password. You just need to remember that password. And let's go ahead and save this. And we'll call this Brent's Cert. Go ahead and click Save, and then click OK. Now we have it set up so it's referenced here in the certificate. The next thing we want to double check are, for example, the package contents. Notice in this one we have a splash logo. Basically, we want to check any files that we need packaged with the app. Uh, and essentially anything in the source folder that uh, gets compiled into the Swift. And then, for example, this splash logo is extra, so that's also there. You want to make sure everything's selected that you expect to be selected. Now this uh, references permissions, and we'll talk about permissions in a second. But for now, just understand that you have to edit the application profile in order to uh, change permissions. So go ahead and click OK. So it's updated the settings. Now uh, let's look at the app descriptor file, which is this XML file that has dash app. Let's double click that. Now when you open it in Flash Builder, you may, be, you may see it in design view. I prefer to look at it in source view. If you've ever done any error application uh, development, this a lot of this will look familiar. And a lot of the things carry over to the mobile. So for example, uh, we have the app ID. Now this is something that you will need to modify just to uh, set up. So for example, uh, we can, you know, we usually do the com and the reverse domain. So .basic view app. The reason this um, app identifier needs to be unique and the reason why you would want to put a reverse DNS is so that uh, when you deploy the app and then when you make updates to it, it's a uh, reference to your, your specific app. All right, what else? Uh, as we go through here, we have the name. We have the name that's displayed, so you can modify that. We also have a version number. Go ahead and set that to like one. Then as you uh, do new uh, versions, you know, if as you post updates, you want to increment that, and that'll also alert uh, the Android market wherever you post it to be uh, that it's an update. Make sure you set this. Uh, if you leave it as zeros, you will get an error when you upload the app to the Google Market or the a Amazon App Store, so it has to be greater than zero. All right, let's scroll down here. Uh, this is content information. A lot of this, again, re applies to desktop apps, but they, they have it in here. Now this here, um, you remember when we created the app, we set some, uh, there were some application settings, and one of them was auto-orients set to true. So that means we want to be able to support portrait and landscape. 
So that's where that is. We also said full screen, so that's where we set that. Uh, visible is true. Soft keyboard behavior uh, refers to a specific uh, control that you have over uh, getting information on when the soft keyboard um, it has to do with modal uh, views so that you can move things so when the soft keyboard appears uh, you can override the behaviors we won't cover that here but that's where that fits in now we'll scroll down a little bit uh, here are the icons now uh, if you are deploying to um, the market you'll want to uh, ensure that you have the specific icons associated with that. So you want to uncomment this and then fill these in with uh, assets that are relative to uh, the app itself. So just keep that in mind. And this lists all of the possible ones um, out there. Of course, this can be, you know, it just depends on the Android or iOS, things like that. Okay, scroll down now again. This covers quite a bit. Uh, here are other additional specifications. So here's iOS stuff we don't have to worry about. Now, this has an example of Android settings, but the actual ones are right here. Now, notice this Android tag, and then it says Manifest Additions. Everything listed here, uh, we have these reference uh, their permissions it also references other things like you could create intents and you can do other things you would in, in, include within the manifest additions if you are familiar with deploying or developing android apps in the native android sdk then you may understand that certain things need to be set in order for it to work uh, remember that permissions must be set for what types of things you want to use so uh, let's say we had set permission, uh, the permission for internet, but let's say we decided to do uh, camera use, then we would want to uncomment this line here so that we have permission to use the camera. Also, uh, one thing to note, let's say you've been developing and you didn't set the permissions. Well, you remember that properties tells us, okay, change the permissions in the app descriptor file. Well, that would be right here. Let's say you were debugging for the camera and it wasn't working, like you weren't getting any response from the device probably you didn't set a permission. So make sure you set the permissions for where uh, you want to use these features. All right, so that's the basics of the app descriptor file. Let's go ahead and save that. And at this point, uh, we want to go up to project and do export release build. Then notice we have the project, the application file, and then we want to, where we want to export it to, as well as uh, we want to sign the package for a target platform. Uh, you could do an intermediate IRI. We'll call that IRI. IRI, A. Eh? No, that's Canadian. What am I saying? IRI, that's Jamaican man. Yaman. A. Eh? I've been to Canada, A. Eh? I know some Canadian. Canadians, A. Eh? All right, enough of that. So at this point, we just want to have signed package for each platform, and the platform is Android. Uh, we can browse to where we want this. So, for example, if we have a, uh, wait a minute, what's going on? Mobile workflows, basic view app, let's export it here. And then we'll go click next. And away it goes. Now it's going to export the release. Now uh, we need to add the password. So go ahead and type in your password. And then uh, go ahead and choose Remember Password. The reason why you, you want to remember the password is so that you uh, don't have to enter it every time. It'll remember it as long as Flash Builder is open. Here again, we see the settings that we've created from the digital the self-signed certificate. You can uh, review packaging like we talk about. Uh, deployment, we can install and launch if anything's connected. And that's what that means. Go ahead and choose Finish. And it's going to be exporting a release build. And at that point, it's done. Now, you navigate to your folder where you have the app. And here, we have a whole bunch of stuff. You can ignore that. But then we have the basic view app.apk. So this is the file that you upload to Google 
or Amazon App Store. Now in the next tutorial we'll talk about some command line compiling and that will cover things for the Amazon App Store that you have to set specifically so that you can uh, upload the app to that market. Right now it's set to the Google Android market. So keep that in mind when you upload it. So this APK is ready to go. You can install it and test it out and uh, you're ready. So when you make all your money and you become famous, don't forget me.